Hi, dear students. Today I'll be conducting IGCSE seminar 2021. And the focus of today's seminar is 0500 First Language English, Paper 1, Reading. Okay, so there are, of course, a few questions that will be tested in Paper 1. And I am going to go through uh, the examination tips, the techniques, examiner's advice, as well as uh, practicing some sample examination questions according to the um, question or according to the component tested. Okay, so I'm going to start with a paper one, question one, um, which is your reading comprehension question. Okay, reading comprehension questions. So, um, Basically, when we look at the key reading skills and key objectives of this reading comprehension question, um, I would say that the candidates uh, must be able to demonstrate understanding of explicit meaning as well as implicit meaning and also attitudes. I'm pretty sure that you guys are pretty much familiar with explicit meaning. That means when the information is explicitly written, um, therefore, you do not really need to understand the idea between the lines. Um, therefore, the ideas are uh, obviously written for you to comprehend or to understand, and that is obviously uh, explicit meaning. But sometimes when you read the reading text, um, there will be some um, meanings or some information which could be only under, uh, which can be only understood by understanding the implicit idea, okay? And apart from that, there is another key assessment objective for reading comprehension, which requires the students to select and use information for specific purposes, okay? Now, let us continue with some examination techniques or perhaps some examination details on reading comprehension. So this reading comprehension questions are supposed to be uh, answered by responding um, to text A. Um, and basically there are five sub questions. That means you have a reading comprehension question 1A until 1E. That means you have five sub questions to be answered. And then a total of 15 marks um, given for this reading comprehension questions, okay? And uh, you need to know that um, each question will generally indicate the paragraph number, or in fact, the line, or in fact, the lines, uh, the numbers of the line or lines, and except uh, for the first question, which uh, generally students get the answers from the first two paragraphs. So, um, there is no specific indication of the paragraph number or a line number given for the first question, I mean, question 1A. But for the rest of the questions, um, we'll, be, we'll be highlighting the paragraph numbers and also the lines, okay? So you need to understand that um, you have a series of questions in this reading comprehension component um, is basically structured to test the student's ability to understand both explicit information and also implicit information. And why these two um, skills are important, that means identifying explicit and implicit information so that the students could um, provide answers according to the nature of the question, whether to copy the answers directly from the text or whether they have to provide answers in their own words or even uh, or maybe the students might need to um, further provide inference uh, for the question given, okay? And these are a few um, reminders or few points for the students to remember that um, whenever you see one mark question, uh, that means most probably the ideas are quite explicitly written in the text. That means you just need to copy and paste the answers directly from the text instead of providing further inference or, or putting the answers in your own words. So remember that one mark questions are generally uh, require you to write down answers directly from the text. 
And then whenever you have two to three marks, uh, therefore you need to understand that uh, it could be a combination of both explicit and implicit details. Almost probably you may be asked to provide an evaluation of how the point further, um, how the point furthers the writer's meaning. And generally, um, when you've been given with three marks questions, um, you will need to use your own words, okay? So always keep this in your mind that marks allocation generally indicates the number of specific points that you need to put in the reading comprehension, um, I mean, in answering the reading comprehension questions, okay? So uh, I'm pretty sure that um, you guys are familiar with uh with this okay so basically these are some of the command words that you will see in the reading comprehension questions in order for you to determine what sort of um solution or what sort of skill that you need to apply in order to answer the reading comprehension questions so that you do not really misinterpret um sometimes um, in case if the students have failed to understand the nature of the reading comprehension questions, they may ended up misinterpreting the, the questions and therefore they ended up copying out um, the answers directly from text A when the question test uh, the students ability to explain or provide inferences. So that's why I came up with this uh, table so that you could understand um, the, the command words in the reading comprehension questions, and you can um, you can uh, you can determine what sort of uh, skill or technique that you have to apply. So um, generally, you will see these two key ideas: uh, these command words, give or identify. So where do you normally see these two command words, say give and identify? Let me just put it according to the um, questions here. So we have question 1A and then we have um, question 1B, okay. So question 1C, uh, question 1D and also question 1E, okay. So um, generally you see this question given identify for question 1A. So you see this in question 1A um, and also question 1C, okay? Um, 1C1 and 1C2. So you generally see this in question 1C1, okay? So whenever you see these two command words, give and identify, um, all you need to do is you have to look for a particular word or phrase from the text, and then you have to straight away write, write it down um, yeah, as the answer. So this is definitely an explicit question, okay? Now, um, you may come across with this command word as well, whereby um, you may be asked to explain using your own words that the text means by, and then you give, um, a word or a phrase that means they generally give you a particular phrase and then you are supposed to translate the literal and inferential meaning of the given phrase okay so this is definitely a translation question and you generally see this question um question 1b as well as question 1e okay so whenever you attempt question 1b and question 1E, you will definitely see this command word um, explain using your own words. Therefore, you need to translate the literal and inferential meaning. So this is obviously a translation question. And then finally, the last command word that you um, will find in reading comprehension questions is definitely the word explain. And um, when are you supposed to use this word explain? Um, in answering question 1C2, okay? So when you're answering question 1C2, um, you generally say this um, word explain, okay? You see a question, um, yeah, you will see explain. And um, this requires you to provide 
um, an understanding of both implicit and explicit idea. So most probably you are required to give a reasoning for a viewpoint or idea. So this is definitely a reasoning question. Uh, sorry, this is definitely a reasoning question. So you are required to write more than what is given in the, um, in the text, basically. So we have covered question 1A here, question 1B here, question 1C1 uh, here, question 1C2 here, and then question 1D. Um, oh, sorry, I think we have only like one, one question for question 1C. Okay, but we have two for question um, D1 and also question T2. So sorry for the um, wrong info. So I would like to amend it here. Okay, so we have question 1B, 1E, and this is basically um, question 1D2. Okay, so this is question 1D1. So there are about three sub questions. Uh, We'll be focusing on uh, this command word give identify, and we have about two sub question uh, questions focusing on explaining using the candidate's own words, and then finally we have uh, only one question which focuses on the candidate's ability to provide inference. Therefore, you see the command word explain here. Okay. Now, let me move on to a sample practice questions. Uh, let me share with you a sample practice question and also sample responses. Okay, so we have um, a text with the title Crady Town and its surrounding or surrounds. I'm not going to read the entire uh, text. I am going to go to the questions straight away. And then perhaps I can show um, sample responses. Okay, response one, uh, which is not really uh, accurately done or excellently done by the candidate. But I have the second response here, which is somehow done pretty well by the candidate. So I am also going to share some feedback uh, based on both responses. So let us analyze the questions first. Okay, so we have give two facts about Crady according to the second paragraph. So uh, this is not a past day paper question. This is an exam style practice question. Therefore, you see um, the number of paragraph, I mean, the paragraph number given in the question. But generally, when you do a past day paper questions, you don't really see the paragraph number given for the first sub question here. Okay, so generally it just give two facts about Crady according to the, the text. Okay, and then um, very rare you see two marks for the first question. Generally you see one mark, but in order for you to get one mark, you must be, um, you must provide two correct facts about Crady according to the second paragraph. So um, in order to get one mark, you must get two facts correctly written. Now let's say if the first fact is correct, the second fact is wrong, you will not be given with 0 0.5 marks, therefore uh, it is considered as zero. Okay, so make sure that you get both the facts uh, correct about Crady um, in order to get one mark. Okay, so what sort of question is this? So this is the command would give, therefore um, this is an explicit question. You just need to go to second paragraph, you copy uh, the facts about Crady, two facts about Crady, and you're gonna straight away uh, answer this question. So this is definitely an explicit um, question. Now let's look at question 1B. Now we have using your own words. So using your own words, um, it's definitely the common idea here. So we expect candidates to provide um, alternative um, synonyms for the phrases given, okay? But there's something very important that the candidates need to understand here that um, each phrase here should have two uh, main ideas. That means you must provide two uh, ideas or two synonyms uh, pertaining the the, the phrases given here. For an example, climaxes with the site. So you're supposed to provide synonym for climaxes and another synonym for site. 
um, and also breathtakingly scenic. So you have to give one synonym for breathtakingly and another um, synonym for scenic. So even though you plan to give uh, the answers in the form of an explanation, uh, but make sure that your explanation should cover both friends, not just um, a single idea from the given um, phrases okay and there is a reason why the paragraph number has been given here um, here paragraph number sometimes they will give you the line number but if you do pass your paper questions generally they will give you line numbers instead of paragraph numbers now the main reason is that so that you get the context correct um, because when it comes to providing synonym, there are too many um, synonyms that can be used in order to replace a given word or a given phrase. So in order to make sure the context is accurately written, um, therefore the paragraph numbers or the line numbers given will definitely be an added advantage for the candidate in order to understand the overall idea before providing uh, the translated answer. Okay, so let's look at the uh, third question here. So reread paragraph three. So the paragraph number is given here and then give two reasons why people might visit the island of Kotron. So give two reasons. So this is the keyword, the command word give. So similar to question 1A, give two facts. So again, this is give two reasons. So I would say that this is another explicit um, question. Therefore, you just need to go to paragraph three and straight away copy two reasons directly from the text. Okay. And then this is question 1D. So if you look at question 1D, you have um, two sub questions. The first one has the command word identify. Therefore, um, this is definitely an explicit question whereby you go to paragraph two and, and look for two things that tourists can enjoy in the town of Grady. Now, generally, the first sub-question will be focusing on the, on the firstly mentioned or firstly given um, paragraph. Uh, and then the second one will be focusing on the second paragraph men mentioned here, like here, paragraph two. So in order to answer question B1, generally you will refer to paragraph two. Unless if you couldn't identify two things from paragraph two, then you can look at paragraph six for the answer. But in case if you manage to find two things that tourists can enjoy in the town of Prady in paragraph two, therefore you may keep or you may uh, leave a paragraph six solely to answer question D2. Okay, so let's look at question D2 here. Explain some of the different attitudes displayed towards dolphins. So explain some of the different attitudes. So here explain is the command word. Therefore, you are supposed to provide inference. That means you can take the points directly from the text and then you're supposed to uh, extend the point or somehow provide some sort of conclusion. So generally, um, the candidates will be given with three marks. Uh, as what I mentioned, this is not a pass your paper question. This is basically an exam style practice question. So um, obviously um, they, you could see some changes in terms of the marks, but I'm pretty sure that with my explanation, you could understand the actual format of reading comprehension component tested in your paper one. Okay, so the final question is using your own words, explain why some people may find visiting a crazy and its surrounding too challenging. So if you could see three marks here and three marks here, so three marks, that means you have to look for three points from paragraph six, and then you try to provide like three conclusions or three different inferences. And the same thing goes here. But when it comes to question 1A, um, the command word using your own words explain, therefore you are supposed to translate. So the points are quite explicitly written. Um, uh, in a particular paragraph given like here, uh, it is an overall uh, idea, not a particular paragraph. But when you do pass your paper questions, generally the paragraph number will be given, for example, um, using your own words or, or, or reread paragraph um, seven and eight, and then explain why some people may find visiting crazy and its surrounding too challenging. So you just need to look for three, um, three uh, points 
um, why visiting Crady um, and its surrounding could be challenging. And then you just going to you then you just um, translate all the three points using a different word. That means you are going to paraphrase the three points without changing the original meaning. Okay, so um, perhaps I would like to check with you some uh, information or some, um, how to say, it's like a checklist uh, for you to understand reading comprehension questions better. So remember that you are supposed to use your scanning skills to help, um, I mean, to, to select appropriate information from text A, and then you're going to identify literal and implied meaning. And at the same time, you're gonna use your own words in order to prove um, a full meaning. So um, similar to the command words and, uh, and, and, and the function of the command words, I, I can see that um, the, the connection can be done here using the checklist given here. Okay, so let's try to explore the responses here. So um, let's look at the question. So the question is, give two facts about Crady according to the second paragraph. So this is the second paragraph. So you are going to look at uh, Crady is a little market town until uh, 19th century. So perhaps I would like to look at, okay, so See, this is the response one. The Wat Roka Kandal um, is a beautiful 19th century temple. This is definitely not a fact because um, this is an opinion. Okay, so I think that uh, this answer cannot really be used for the first question, uh, but we can obviously take Kredi is in the east of Cambodia. So talking about uh, facts, obviously you have to look for um, you know, uh, we have to look for some facts, okay? Uh, so although the first point contains a fact, but the response also includes an opinion, and that's why we can't really um, accept this, okay? Um, the first answer. So um, let me straight away go to um, response two. So it is 348 kilometers away from Phnom Penh, and then it's what and it's what Roka Kandal temple dates back to the 19th century. So 348 kilometers, the 19th century. So if you go to the second paragraph, I'm pretty sure that you could find this two uh, facts about Crazy Town here. So miles just changed to kilometer. And then, um, and then you can see that you have the idea of uh, this beautiful temple that, that, that dates back to the 19th century. So there are two facts explicitly written in paragraph two. Okay, now let us move on to the second question here. Now, so what do you mean by climaxes with the site? So you can go to paragraph four and look for the idea uh, climaxes with the site and then breathtaking listening from paragraph five. So let me go to paragraph four and let us identify this. Okay, so let us identify this. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay, yes. Um, see, uh, the 8.5 mile perimeter route takes you right around the island's edge. It's unchallenging and climaxes with the site of a floating Vietnamese village. And then you have another um, phrase here, okay. Um, okay, breathtakingly scenic. So perhaps we are talking about the route to north uh, out of Crady, so breathtakingly scenic. So you're talking about how beautiful um, was the scenic, okay? So let us straight away go to the correct answer. So um, the most impressive view comes at the end of the tour. So uh, most impressive view comes at the end of the tour. So most impressive basically answers um, uh, climaxes with the site. Okay, now breathtakingly scenic. Let's look at the answer for breathtakingly scenic here. Okay, so you can say that the landscape is strikingly beautiful. So breathtakingly scenic, strikingly beautiful. So you can straight away get uh, two marks for it. Two marks for each uh, question. Now, next um, next question is um, okay. Let's look at the next question. Now, so you're going to reread. Um, sorry, okay. 
Reread paragraph three. So you're going to go to paragraph three, and then you're going to look for two reasons why people might visit the island of Kothrong. So if you go to the text, you can straight away look for two ideas. So what are the two ideas? Why do you think that people would like to visit Kothrong? Because number one, the plantations and paddies are peaceful and attractive, and then the humped zebu are a classic feature of Cambodia. So if you go to paragraph three, you could obviously find answers. Um, this answers. Okay, now let's look at question four here. Okay, so question four, um, that means question 1D. Now identify two things that tourists can enjoy in town of Crady. If you go to paragraph two, you can, you can obviously find, okay, two things that people can do there and tourists could do, what they could do. They could obviously um oh sorry let me stop sharing and start sharing once again sorry for the technical issue okay so um, the beautiful sunset and the different styles of architecture so these are the two things that uh, that uh, um a guest or tourist could enjoy and then let's look at this question here Okay, explain some of the different attitudes. So this can be slightly challenging that you're supposed to look for uh, some of the different attitude displayed towards dolphin in paragraph six. So I'm going to just quickly go through paragraph six and then you're going to come up with three conclusions. How uh, people, uh, I mean, people's different attitude towards dolphin. So um, this is paragraph one, two, three, four, um, five and six. Okay. Okay, so closer to Crady, the fishing village of Campy offers boat trips to view Crady's other aquatic marvel, the Irrawaddy dolphins. Though locals have long revered um, the dolphins, believing them to be half human, half fish, their numbers have diminished in recent years due to electric rods and explosives used for fishing. Um, don't expect any flipper style antics. This retiring creatures only a surface to breathe. So revered here uh, is obviously referring to something which is sacred and is being worshipped. So these dolphins are basically being worshipped and at the same time, um, in order for them to make their living, they don't even mind using electric rods and explosive which could eventually kill the dolphin. So I would see a contradictory idea um, about how people um, um, view this dolphin. So how people basically, um, you know, uh, uh, look at the dolphins. Okay. So the writer thinks the dolphins are impressive. The locals share this opinion and respect the dolphins due to the mythical belief that they are half human. So this is one idea. However, fishermen don't appear to care about the dolphins as their fishing methods have caused many of the creatures to die. So uh, they are quite impressive. So they've been worshipped or they've been um, highly respected as they are uh, the mythical um, um, animal or mythical creature. And then at the same time, they also share some sort of um, I don't care attitude towards this dolphin because the fishermen basically just ended up focusing on fishing instead of like you know taking care of this dolphin so they may tend to use any sort of methods as long as they could get um fish uh, i mean as long as they could catch uh, more fishes um therefore they couldn't really bother about the dolphins okay and then finally let's look at the last question here Okay, so using your own words, explain why some people may find visiting Crady and its surrounding too challenging. So if you go to, I mean, this is like based on the entire text. So let's look at the answer. So people might find uh, the visit too challenging because it is a countryside area that seems cut off from civilization and modern conveniences. 
and then the roads are badly constructed and this makes journey very uncomfortable. And some of the places to visit can only be reached by long bike ride, which some might find exhausting. And people might also find the weather too warm, especially in places where there is little shade. So I think more than three points have been given here. So I think this answer is definitely um, sufficient in order for the candidate to score a total of three marks, okay? So you could also check your progress here, okay? Whether you have sound progress or excellent progress by looking at some of the uh, key point ideas. So in, in case, uh, if you think that you have understood this very well, so most probably you have acquired an excellent progress in answering reading comprehension question. Therefore, uh, it, it can definitely show your ability to scheme, scan and select um, to identify a variety of examples in the text. And then you could obviously explain the literal meaning using your own words. You can obviously infer and explain complex um, or uh, subtle meaning in the text. And then uh, it also shows that you have the ability to identify and explain attitudes in the text. And also you are very good at selecting information for different purposes. Okay, now, um, let me continue with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the next question. Okay, so this is still paper one. Um, it is still part of question one. So this is like uh, the continuation of a question one, which is summary writing. Okay, so let me just share with you the assessment objectives of the summary writing. So, um, so basically, um, we have both reading and writing assessments here. Okay. Uh, even though it's a reading paper, but of course your summary writing, uh, the way you have written it will be assessed as well. So um, basically we give 10 marks for reading. That means you must have at least uh, 10 points uh, taken from text B. So remember, do not accidentally uh, refer to a wrong text or uh, do not get confused. I know that there are too many components in paper one and there are three texts. Maybe sometimes students do get confused, but always remember that um, for summary writing, you are supposed to look at text B. They have to supposed to respond uh, to text B. So remember that you have to uh, you have to read text B and then you need to get at least 10 uh, points in order to get 10 marks for your reading. And this 10 points could be explicit points, implicit points. And then um, we will see how well you could select accurate information according to the instruction given. And then um, when it comes to writing, it is all about how well you could organize your points. And then um, obviously you are required to uh, paraphrase the points without copying word by word from the text. Therefore, um, we will see the ability of you to, to vary a range of vocabulary without changing the actual context. And, and finally, your GPSS, your, your grammar, punctuation, spelling, and also your sentence structure. Okay, so remember 10 marks given for the reading um, assessment objective and you, you'll be given with five marks for the written expression. Okay, so let me straight away go to the marking criteria. Now, I do not want to go through the entire reading um, marking rubric here. I'm just going to look at level five, how to gain uh, highest mark or how to score highest level for reading. Therefore, Remember that um, when you read text B, you must be able to show that you have read text B effectively. That means you have comprehended the text uh, very well. Therefore, you ended up providing a wide range of relevant ideas and quite consistent and also well focused. And remember that the points are skillfully selected to demonstrate an overview um, of the text. Okay, so this is how you can get your 10 marks. And um, I normally um, ask students to select 10 correct points um, in order to get 10 marks here. Now, let me move on to um, table B, the writing description, marking description. So how to get level three, the highest level, four to five marks. So whatever points that you have extracted from uh, text B related to the topic related to the instruction must be um, expressed clearly, fluently, and most 
most importantly, it, uh, with concession. So we will see how well you can organize um, the points according to an appropriate structure, or perhaps we will see the logical order of the points. And then we will see how well you can um, change or paraphrase the points from text B in order to put them in your own words. And then we will see how well you can select suitable vocabulary in order to paraphrase the points and whether the choice of your vocabulary managed to clarify the actual meaning given in the text. And then finally, your language accuracy, which focuses on spelling, punctuation, grammar, and also sentence structure. Okay, so let me straight away go to some of the key reading technical skills here. So remember that always, un, uh, always responds to text B, not text A, because uh, I know that some students can accidentally read different texts, wrong texts. Remember that reading comprehension is focusing on text A. Uh, your summary writing is basically focusing on text B. So it's basically 700 to 750 words, so not more than 120 words, um, uh, under 20 words of summary. Therefore, you are not supposed to uh, give more or give less, okay? So remember that if you, um, if you have written less than 120 words, most probably you fail to include some relevant points. In case if you have exceeded the word limit, most probably you have incorporated or you have included unnecessary information. So you do, you're not required to count the words, okay? So just produce a summary that contains only information that are relevant to the topic. Make sure that you use your own words. And then if you come across with any uh, specific terminology, you are not really required to rephrase or substitute every single word from the original text, okay? So this is just um, a simple technique. How can you maintain 120 words of summary? Now, let's say that you can get about 10 points from text B. Therefore, we can have average of 12 words for each point. Therefore, you can have about 120 words of summary um, so that you can avoid uh, having or producing top heavy summary. So in order to maintain a balance um, in terms of points elab elaboration, therefore I will always suggest students to have about uh, 12 words for each point. So remember that be concise, focus, and always use your own words, okay? And I have also included more study tips here, okay? So you could obviously check the study tips here, okay? Um, and then um, perhaps I would like to touch on a few paraphrasing skills that students can apply uh, in order for you to gain mark for your writing um, assessment uh, uh, mark. That means in order for you to get that five marks, of course, paraphrasing technique uh, is uh, one key criteria. Therefore, um, you may just use some of this paraphrasing technique. That means this is the the commonly used paraphrasing technique, which is using synonym replacement. That means um, you just try to look for different word to, uh, to, to, to replace the actual uh, point from, from the text, okay? So this is an example. The diagram below shows the process by which bricks are manufactured for the building industry. So the diagram illustrates, so it shows you change to illustri illustrates and then um, bricks are manufactured, you change to bricks are made, uh, made for. Um, so this is definitely um, commonly used, or I would say it's quite famous among students. So students generally tend to choose synonym replacement technique um, in paraphrasing um, the points, okay? So more examples. And then um, you may also change parts of speech. For an example, um, uh, she is beautiful and uh, she is beautiful and many people uh, love her. So perhaps you can change that. Her beauty mesmerizes everyone. So she is beautiful from an adjective. You're changing it to uh, her beauty to a noun. So this also could be another uh, type of paraphrasing or another technique for paraphrasing um, the actual or the original uh, point. So you can also change the parts of speech, okay? And then you can also um, change um, affirmative to negative statement, okay? Um, more examples are given here. 
and then you can also change the word order okay so i i just leave the examples here so that you could just go through this and um, I would always suggest students to basically combine the techniques that means you try to combine the techniques do not just use synonym replacement perhaps you can do use synonym replacement um, with uh, active and passive for an example or you use synonym replacement with changing um, parts of speech so that you can provide or you can even produce um, even more effective um, uh, answers, okay? And then um, a very quick um, uh, review on uh, summary question. So this is an example of summary question. So according to text B, how can noise pollution affect the environment, wildlife and aquatic mammals here? So you know that uh, this is text B, so you're focusing on text B. And then um, when, when, when you see the word according, it shows that you're not going to provide your own ideas. Therefore, you are supposed to take the points directly from text B. And then noise pollution, environment, wildlife, aquatic mammals. So this should be, um, you know, the main idea. This is the instruction. So in what ways uh, this noise pollution could affect this three um, elements here or three main ideas here, environment, wildlife and aquatic mammals. So any other ideas uh, apart from environment, wildlife, aquatic mammals should not be uh, taken. Let's say that, uh, let's say if in text B, you may come across with uh, the noise pollution effect on human, but you are not supposed to take that because the question covers uh, noise pollution effect on the environment, wildlife, and also aquatic uh, aquatic mammals. Okay, so you must use continuous writing, not a note form. So remember that you have to always maintain the word limit. So go maximum 120. And then uh, remember that 10 marks available for content. So you must have at least 10 points in the text. And then remember, in order to maintain um, the five marks, so in order to gain highest level for uh, language um, mark, I would suggest you to uh, focus on language accuracy, paraphrasing skill, how well you can logically organize your point. And, and also, I always advise students to use complex sentences. Okay, so this is the sample text, but I'm going to straight away go to, um, okay, I'm straight away going to go, go to the text, okay. So, so noise pollution is undesirable or destructive sound that interferes with normal daily activity for humans and wildlife. So you're not going to take this point, obviously, because we're not talking about, uh, yeah, sorry, you can obviously take this idea uh, number one, it could be very annoying and disturbing, okay? And then it is now also shown to have profound effect on nature and our environment. So it is definitely seriously damaging uh, the environment, okay? And then you could find more points here. Okay, so this human disturbance affecting humans, but now studies are revealing how noise pollution is also causing harmful effects to plants, animals, trees, and marine life. Now you may think that why, um, why we can't take some points from this part here, even though we could see some effect of noise pollution, for an example, um, you know, uh, like noise pollution is generated in numerous ways, including road, air, sea, transport, construction machinery, domestic machinery, and then you have idea about uh, includes loud music in shops, but we are not really focusing this because we are not talking about human here. We're talking about how this noise pollution is basically affecting plants, animals, and trees. So this is some sort of uh, topic sentence, or I would say the thesis statement, which will help you to identify more points after this particular line here. Okay, so of course, um, so according, okay, so this is human disturbance affecting human, but now studies are revealing how noise pollution is also causing harmful effect to plants, animal trees and marine life. So we are talking about shipping and pleasure boats here. Okay, and then you talk about, um, okay, the point, human noise can have, um, 
ripple effects on how long-lived plants and trees that can last for. Okay, so this is definitely long-term damage. A noise pollution could make long-term damage. And then you could see another negative effect on pollination. That means many plants and trees basically rely on birds and other animals to deliver uh, pollen from one flower or tree. So obviously it is disrupting the pollination. Okay, and then you can see another point here, noise can change the very landscape, woods and plant growth. So while you are identifying the points, I would suggest you, I would advise you to um, straight away or one shot, um, paraphrase the idea so that um, when you write the summary, you do not need to look at the original text. Uh, therefore, you are just going to look at the extracted point which you, which you basically paraphrased already. Okay, and then um, garden machinery could cause more harm. So human disturbed natural habitats, upsetting the food chain. Okay, so more points are given here. So I'm gonna straight away go to a sample response here. Okay, so noise pollution is the natural environment is loud, unnatural sound, one point, caused by people and man-made machines. Then this disturbs um, quiet locations where birds and mammals sit food and shelter, so three, four, and then we have research now shows plants are also suffering due to the changes in animal behavior, uh, five, um, then we have predators cannot hunt in silence, obviously another problem, so they can be an overpopulation of rodents, uh, birds are prevented from finding food for the young, causing them to die. This is another point. A garden and farm machinery is causing long-term imbalance in the food chain. Another point, affecting pollination and affecting plant growth, nine. At sea ships, engines are affecting how sea mammals communicate. So it's also affecting uh, how sea mammals communicate and also migrate. So the reduction in safe habitat for birds and mammals on land and at sea is putting endangered species at grey. Great, so I could see about 11 points. So obviously this candidate can get 10 out of 10 for the reading. And then all the points have been uh, well developed. And then I would say have been a fair phrase. So obviously 10 marks for reading. And then writing marks, I could see some errors uh, in terms of punctuation, sentence structure, but overall um, uh, very fluent and very clear. So we can get, uh, we can give the student four out of five. So therefore, this is a perfect example of summary, which we can um, give the student 14 out of 15. Okay. Now, let us move on to uh, question 2A to C. So these are the short answer questions. Okay. Now, um, the assessment objectives uh, will be focusing more on reading. So there's nothing much on writing assessment. So mostly we are focusing on reading assessment objectives. So um, I would say uh, it's a 10 marks question and then you're supposed to respond based on taxi. So if you look at the, uh, if you look at the questions, um, question one uh, basically um, uh, focusing on reading comprehension in response to text A, summary writing in response to text B. So question two and question three are basically um, uh, require the candidates to respond to text C. So by the time you complete, well, by the time you have completed your question two, and then you are getting ready for question three, I'm pretty sure that you have generated a very good understanding of text C. Okay, so yes, I would like to straight away go to uh, the types of questions. Okay, so for the short answer questions, I would say that there are about four uh, types of short answer question. So the first type of question, which is your 2A, consists of four sub questions and you are look, you are supposed to find and then you're supposed to copy out a word or a phrase which suggests the same idea as the words underlined within the paraphrase uh, paraphrase phrase from the text. That means um, you will see four um, sentences given and then there will be a phrase or a word underlined from the given sentences and then you're going to go to taxi, you're going to read taxi and then you are going to look for a word or phrase which we can use to replace the underlying, um, uh, underlying phrase or underlying word from the 
uh, from the question here. Okay, so this is the second type of a short answer question, which requires you to provide synonyms, a brief explanation for three underlying words from a short extract from the track from the text. Okay, and then um, your two C is all about you. Um, basically choosing one example from a short extract. So sometimes you see the same extract used for question 2B will be again used for question 2C, but sometimes you see a different extract, but obviously whatever extract that they're going to give you, definitely taken from taxi. So um, in order for you to get three marks for uh, question 2C, it's all about you selecting a correct example Okay, and then you're supposed to look for the effect. So I would say that your question 2C is like a warm up question before you attempt even more challenging question for 2D, which is your language task. So perhaps I can straight away share with you a sample question. See, um, of course, there are four sub questions, but I am just giving you one example here. So identify a word or phrase from the text which suggested the same idea as the words underlined, a word underlined here. So here, his green was both timid and self assured. So uh, uh, there are a few techniques that you can apply here. So the first technique or the first um, step is that number one, you need to understand the idea of timid. Okay, you have to understand the idea of timid. Now, number two, you are look, uh, you are supposed to look for the key ideas from the uh, question so that you can locate uh, uh, the, the key ideas in the given text. So um, his green was both timid and self-assured. So his green is something to do with the smile. So when you read the text, you're gonna straight away look at the, uh, you're straight away going to look for the keyword smile. So here, um, can you see this? The young man's hair was sunburnt looking or rather the color of, uh, I don't see any point here, but I could identify the answer here. How I managed to identify this because the keyword smile is somehow related to the green and was both timid and self-assured. So I have shy uh, and so here, yet yeah, confident. So I would say self-assured is confident. So obviously, uh, what would be a word that I can choose from this text in order to replace the idea timid? Definitely shy. So when you answer, you just need to give your answer shy and then you will get one mark. So four questions similar to this pattern and you're going to get four marks for this. Okay, now let me move on to the second uh, type of question tested, um, which requires you to provide synonym, that's it. So this is the extract given, okay? So um, she was not frightened, she simply felt, okay, she simply felt a, a deep disgust and perhaps a divined it or read it in her face for after staring at her a moment, he drew back and turned slowly away from the door. She crept to the window and saw his bent figure um, striding up the road in the moonlight. So there are three words underlined here. Generally, they'll give you words. Uh, very rare, I see phrases given for this, uh, this pattern uh, or this type of question. Uh, generally, you'll be given with words. So here, so what do you mean by disgust? So all you need to do is that provide um, one synonym, okay? And then, um, so these are some of the examples here, okay? And then divined, guessed, worked out, okay? Bent, stooping, back leaning forward. So let's say that you have, uh, the. let's say that if the given uh, word is a noun, most probably you can also look for another noun um, uh, as a synonym. Let's say that uh, it is an adjective that perhaps you have to look for another adjective. So let's say that you've been given with a word, therefore you can also look for another word as a synonym. Uh, for, I mean, in answering this question. So this is obviously the second type of question, okay? And then the third type of question, which requires you to provide one example from, uh, from the given extract. But remember that this example can be a word or a phrase, okay? And then there will be other key ideas um, for an example like this one here, 
Okay, um, use one example from the text below to explain how the writer suggests charity's experiences and feelings. So um, the moment you have identified the correct example, you will be given with one mark. And then um, if you manage to provide comprehensive explanation of charity's experiences and feelings, therefore you can get a complete three marks for this question. Perhaps I can straight away show you a sample answer. Now, so this is the text, okay. Sorry, I've stopped sharing it. Um, sorry for the technical um, issue. So this is basically, okay, the, the question. Okay. Sorry, I don't have the extract here. Okay, so, um, Okay, now entered into the glacial twilight suggests that charity has gone into the library while it's getting dark. The sun is setting outside and so there are likely to be shadows within the darkening room. Meanwhile, the adjective glacial suggests that the room feels icily cold. This may be both a literal low temperature, but also figurative. She hates the place so much that she feels frozen when inside. So that means, um, this is the example selected from the given uh, from the given extract. The extract is not really here, um, but this is how you are supposed to answer it. So, entered into the glacial twilight is one mark, and then you can see the explanation is quite comprehensive. So, you have a both expl explanation focusing both on the experiences and also feelings of charity. Therefore, we can straight away give it three marks for this. So. Um, I'm just, uh, so I have another set of questions here, okay, taken from past year paper, okay, so if you could see that, just to show you the actual pattern, okay, identify a word or phrase from the text, which suggests the same idea as the words underlined, so can you see that, so inform plan choice, so you're just going to go to taxi, and then you're going to straight away look for the answer, okay, unrelenting, affectionately, responsibility, Okay. Okay, let me stop sharing and then continue sharing once again. Okay, so this is the text. So if you have free time, perhaps you can go through this. Okay, now, so I'm going to go through um, one, one of the most challenging questions in paper one, which is um, the writer's task question, which is also known as writer's effect question. So the language task question is also known as writer's effect question. So um, remember that um, there are basic three steps. You're gonna read the question, you're gonna reread read this uh, specified paragraph, okay? And then you're gonna select examples. So basically three imagery from each body, each paragraph given, and then you're gonna straight away write the uh, response. That means how does the language work uh, based on the selected imagery? So 15 marks given, now 25 minutes given for you to complete uh, the task, okay? And then um, remember to choose powerful words and phrases. Uh, very important for you to discuss connotation, not just literal meaning. So you need to comment how imagery is created. So if whenever you're choosing an imagery, always look for uh, words which can evoke a sensory details. Uh, perhaps imagery could be quite unusual, interesting, where you can obviously show how uh, the language works. Okay, and then um, you have to always keep in your mind um, that whatever imagery that you choose, your analysis of to show how the language works will definitely relate it to the tone, mood, atmosphere, and also feelings um, related to the selected imagery. So try to link everything back to what is being described in order to come up with a very sophisticated response. So. Okay, so these are a few steps and then I would always suggest students to spend some time to prepare or to plan your writer's effect answer. Okay, so I would say um, 10 minutes for you to plan. So out of like 25 minutes, you can spend about 10 minutes uh, to plan. Therefore, you can use about 15 minutes to write your response. So very simple, read the question. You circle the paragraph, uh, num uh, the paragraph, or you just put a little symbol 
uh, to indicate which paragraph that you're supposed to refer to, because sometimes, no matter how well your anal analysis um, is, in case if you have selected the imagery from wrong paragraph, the entire response is wrong. Okay, so just need to understand the overall idea of the paragraph. That means what's happening in the paragraph, the tone, the feelings, uh, who basically involved in the paragraph, what happened so that you can generate a better understanding. So, and then an overview statement is very important. This is like a topic sentence or an overall atmosphere mood of the paragraph so that you can stay focused um, so that the choice of your imagery must be related to the overview statement, okay, or whatever that you provide should basically focus on the positive diction or the negative diction as per stated uh, in the general effect of the paragraph, okay, and then you're going to underline anything interesting that creates imagery. And then you're going to go back and take the best three in each paragraph. And then you're going to explain how, or I would say what each of the imagery say, or what sort of uh, connotations that you can make of the implicit idea and what kind of image that you could create. Okay, so I'm going to straight away go to, um, okay, I'm going to straight away go to the, okay, now remember that, um, make sure that you choose correct example, correct imagery. So if you feel like the imagery or the choice of, of phrases and words fail to evoke your sensory details, therefore you have not selected imagery at all. Remember that imagery must definitely help you to uh, imagine. If you can't really imagine, therefore uh, you have not selected strong imagery, okay? You know, sometimes even when you see phrases and words, uh, containing uh, some simple uh, adjective can be treated as imagery, but in case if they're too uh, uh, lame or perhaps it's not really helping you to create stronger imagination, therefore I would definitely suggest you to choose a better imagery because choosing accurate or choosing suitable sophisticated imagery is actually part of the marking rubric as well. Okay, so clear, highlight the keywords, phrases in the code, and then define the keywords, and then you're going to analyze the keyword. Uh, we are going to look at what does it mean, and then what does it make you think, and then what sort of atmosphere does it create, and then we're trying to link it to the overall text. Okay, so I have a sample question here. So this is basically a 2013 uh, paper, okay? Um, and then this is the question, but before that, perhaps I would like to show you the text. So this is the passage out in the call. And then if you look at the question, you will be asked to focus on two paragraphs here. Okay, so what are the two paragraphs? Paragraph three and also paragraph five, okay? So number one is the intense call in paragraph three and then the lighting of the fire in paragraph five. So um, you are gonna look for a three strong imagery in paragraph three in describing the intense call and three strong imagery from paragraph five in describing the lighting of the fire. Okay, so remember the top tip, you will be given clues about what the focus is in the question. So this will definitely help you to make your choices as well as explaining them pretty well. Okay, so remember, choose three examples of words or phrases from each paragraph. Now I'm going to straight away go to paragraph three. So one to three. So this is paragraph three. And I'm going to look for some strong imagery describing the intense goal. Okay, now um, he had set off at 7 a.m. and by 11 had covered half the distance, seated on a fallen tree, he unmittened his right hand, reached inside his coat, fished out uh, a biscuit, he had barely chewed the first mouthful, when his numbing fingers, I could, I managed to find one. So numbing fingers is definitely a strong imaginary, uh, imagery. Close your eyes, you can obviously imagine numbing fingers, the, the kind of sensation that the narrator felt, okay? And then warn him to put his mitten on. So warn him is definitely a personification. So this is definitely um, can be taken as, um, as, as one of the imagery. So this he did surprise at the bitter swiftness. Obviously you can choose this. The frost had bitten. This is another personification. 
generally human buy animals buy but when you are trying to give this animal uh, or human um, action or human quality to something which is not living like in this case you're talking about frost therefore this is definitely a very strong imagery this is a personification so he could feel himself beginning to chill so he leaped to his feet and ran briskly up the trail now he made him warm again but the moisture he exhaled crusted his lips so crusted his lips could be another strong imagery, icy crystal, um, miniature glacier, um, and then a sensation abandon his face, and then burn with the returning blood. So I would say there are lots of, I would say more than three strong imagery could be found in paragraph three. So all you need to do is that you need to choose the best three. Okay, so remember, you are done reading a paragraph three and then I would always suggest you to come up with an over overview or a general effect before you start writing a full analysis, okay? So can you see that? This paragraph is about the intense effect of the cold and the subsequent pain caused. So we see the way in which Tom struggles to keep warm against uh, the extreme cold, okay? So here, Okay, if you read the second part of the text, okay, so this paragraph describes the fragile nature of the fire as well as the delicate focus, uh, focus efforts needed to keep it going. I can straight away show you uh, the imagery like here, um, uh, description about the fragile nature of the fire. Can you see that? This imagery to kindle nest of fire, uh, the bark burst into bright flame, red with uh, fed with smallest tweaks, cherishing it with utmost care, gently nurturing it. Uh, and then the fire uh, was now alive. So the fire was young, but now alive. So I would say there are strong imagery here. Okay, so once you're done with that, you just need to select the best three imagery and then try to put some keywords. That means whatever that comes into your mind about the imagery, that means you want to uh, describe about um, the overall atmosphere, overall mood. What does it mean? What does it describe? What does it present? Therefore, you just need to come up with some key ideas. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Perhaps I can share with you um, some here. For example, numbing fingers, obviously you're talking about uh, the loss of sensation there. He, the writer couldn't really feel his fingers hard to move, loss of warmth. So cold is basically taking over. And then um, if you could see frost had bitten, it's some sort of attack. The frost is actually attacking the, the writer. So providing wound and it's quite vicious. So uh, it's basically a personification referring to um, the frost as a, as, a, as a vicious enemy or, or a predator. So try to come up with some keywords. I would suggest you to have five to six keywords. And these keywords could be the literal meaning, could be implicit meaning, uh, could be connotations, I mean, shades of meaning. It could be words related to feelings, atmosphere, mood. So as long as you have about five to six keywords um, related to uh, the imagery selected here, I think you can obviously use them in constructing an effective response. Okay, so remember, three times of each, okay? You can put quotation mark and then the explanation of the word and phrase and then the effect, the analysis and how you can link to the whole paragraph. So I'm gonna straight away share uh, with you a sample response here, okay? So this paragraph is about the intense effect of the cold and the subsequent pain cause. So if you could see that uh, intense cold, subsequent pain, um, in which Tom struggles, Tom is the writer, to keep warm against the cold. So this is the general effect. So this is something that I will always ask the students to write before start, uh, before, before start analyzing the language in detail. So, so basically the word numbing shows there is no feeling in his fingers. This suggests that he is losing warmth and control as the frost sets to work on his exposed flesh. The image of him losing feeling and function in his fingers further reinforces how un, unprepared he is for this kind of weather and also how quickly such extreme cold can take hold. So can you see that 
it's quite balanced. It's quite balanced. It's not like one uh, one analysis is shorter than the other or longer than the other. So all three imagery, um, uh, all three imagery have been given with an equal amount of language uh, explanation. Okay. So the next one here, the frost had bitten. The word bitten describes the physical and painful effect of the cold has on him. The personification suggests that he is being attacked or wounded by the coal and position, uh, positions the coal as a predator. So this also reinforces the idea that the coal is vicious of peril, which adds to the struggle to survive and reveals a sense of danger to the reader. Okay, and then finally, Manisha Glacier is a, uh, so the coal described as having formed a mound of ice on his face. The use of glacier describes how his face is now reflecting the icy landscape around him and suggests that it is now becoming a part of him. The fact that his um, features now reflect the landscape around him highlights the fact that he's losing his struggle against the cold and his changing shape as his body reacts to the elements. Can you see that? It's a perfect um, way of writing um, the analysis for the imagery um, numbing fingers, um, frost had beaten, and also uh, miniature glacier. Okay, so these are some of the guiding questions. Uh, and then the structure of your answer, that means you have the quotation here, quote, and then you explain the word, and then um, you are writing the effect in analysis, and then you try to link it to the whole paragraph. So these are the keywords. Uh, as how, as I mean, the keywords that we have discussed in the previous slides. Okay, so I have given you some examples of tips there. Perhaps you can read it later. And then let us move on to the last um, section or the last part of paper one, which is an extended response question. So what are we looking at today? We are looking at how to answer extended response question. Is this the um, highest mark um, component? Um, tested in paper one, so 25 marks. So in order to get the 25 marks, you have to spend 45 minutes to write, and then you are going to spend about 20 minutes to basically plan uh, your answer, plan or draft before you start answering. So remember that it's a reading question, but since that you are writing, obviously, whatever you write, uh, your imagination, your thought, everything is being assessed here. Therefore, marks was also given for writing assessment objective. Okay. So remember, there are a few uh, things that you need to understand. So basically, these are the possible forms you uh, you'll be uh, you will be um, required to write a letter. It could be formal, informal. It could be a journal <coughs> journal entry. It could be an interview, magazine article, newspaper column, or even a speech. Okay, <clears throat> so this is definitely the overview of the question. So you're going to read taxi, and then you're going to write your response based on taxi. Do not copy sections because copying big chunks from the original text will not help you to gain mark. So your voice has to be realistic. And then you're supposed to use correct perspective. And that's where I will always encourage students to practice the FAPP. Uh, later, I'll be explaining in detail what is FAPP, okay? And then uh, whose point of view that, uh, that the candidate would like to adopt, okay? And then perhaps uh, uh, we have to concentrate more on the three bullet points given. Remember that each bullet point has to be equally um, explained, okay? So remember, understand, infer, and predict. Write in the correct form. Make sure that you're writing it to the correct audience with correct purpose. And you're going to use all the details, relevant details from taxi, okay? And then make sure that you develop, not just copy the details directly from the text. So develop and then try to produce own points, okay? So be creative and most importantly, make sure that organize your ideas clearly, fluently, and also accurately. So, so these are the steps involved. There are only about five steps here. So these five steps are part of the preparation, part of planning the answer. So read question three, 
So understand the form, audience, purpose, and also perspective, okay? And then you need to understand the keywords and the bullet points given. And then you have to really understand the three bullet points. And then finally, you're going to plan it. So you need to understand what is FAPP. Later, I'm going to discuss in detail. I'm going to share in detail. Okay, but before that, let us look at the question here. So we're going to read text C. It's the same text which I have used for writer's effect question just now out in the call. Okay, so basically you are Tom Vincent. So this is the perspective from which point of view you are basically giving a speech. So the speech is basically the type of form. So the form is a speech and you are Vincent from Vincent's perspective. And then you are giving the speech to newcomers to Kalamit camp. So this will be your audience. And the purpose is definitely related to the three bullet points given in the, uh, in the question. So in your talk, you should tell the newcomers about the reason hazardous. So that means when you read text C, you're going to look for details pertaining what? Uh, the, the recent hazardous walk. So most probably the challenges of the walk. Um, I mean, the difficulties of the walk, okay? And then explain the skills and knowledge needed to survive in this environment. Uh, most probably the challenges, um, the challenges or perhaps the details of how challenging the walk could also be associated to the knowledge. That means, let's say that, uh, that why the walk was very hazardous because it was a very long trail. So let's say if it's a long trail is, 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 the, is, is one of the hazardous, therefore what skill that you need to have, that means you need to be physically fit, for an example, okay, in order for you to uh, uh, hike or to, to, to walk for maybe 50 kilometers, for an example. So uh, P1 and also P2, bullet point one and bullet point two, are somehow associated. Remember that bullet point one, 30% from the candidate, 70% from the text. So bullet point one and two, you could see about 70% of the details can be taken from the text and 30% of the details uh, should um, come from the candidates, okay? But the third bullet point generally focuses on 70% of uh, points from the candidates and then 30% uh, from, the, from the text. I mean, 30% details from the text, but 70%. So this is where you're going to infer you're going to provide more ideas. That means you're going to go beyond the ideas given in the text in order to provide answers. So in order for you to answer your P3, your third bullet point, okay? So remember 200 to 350 words. So you have to maintain about 110 words for each paragraph. So that's how I normally, um, you know, I will normally organize my paragraph. So about 110 words for P1, uh, talking about the hazardous walk. And then another 110 uh, words for the second uh, idea, talking about skills and knowledge. And then another 110 words for um, sharing what sort of um, experience, what sort of things that you have learned about yourself from this experience. So yourself means we're talking about Tom Vincent here. So who is Tom Vincent? You are Tom Vincent. Okay, clear? Now, so this is the text. I think um, uh, I'm not gonna read the text. Uh, Perhaps I'm going to straight away go to the question. So can you see that? You're Tom Vinson. So most probably you're talking from your personal experience. You learn a lot from your experience. Therefore, you're going to share, uh, share whatever you have learned to the newcomers. So you have learned to listen to the advice. Most probably you were very young and you failed to listen to the advice. But now uh, being a senior or seasoned person, therefore you decide to give uh, advice to the newcomers and then you know how dangerous um, the track could be um, or would be and then understand the challenges and then fear for your life. The Ms. Formanson basically feared for his life and he, he basically has knowledge of the terrain and then he managed to survive. So look at this, that means it's not just it's looking at the idea from Tom Vincent's perspective, just like that. Perhaps you have to look at the detailed idea of, uh, of uh, Tom Vincent, okay? And then the purpose is you are going to help others um, and you're going to advise others, okay? And then your audience most probably very eager, excited, like how you used to be when you first started the exploration. And then most probably they are quite unaware of the danger. Now, why are we analyzing this so that when you read taxi, you are pretty much, um, uh, how to say that, you're pretty much um, uh, attentive 
to the details which you need to select in order to answer um, you know, the question. Okay, so it's definitely a, a speech and uh, when it comes to speech, obviously addressing audience is important. You have to focusing more on the feelings. How exactly did you feel during uh, the journey? And then you use the first person um, voice and then you can also include the audience as part of the speech. So you can use be, you, us. Okay, and then you can use some rhetorical question, emotive language, personal experience in order to make your speech sound more interesting. Okay, so perhaps I would like to uh, move on to one of the most important steps or the tips when it comes to extended writing or extended response writing is PDD. What do you mean by PDD? points, details, and development. Can you see that? Now, this details can be taken from taxi, and this is how each candidate's answer is going to vary. That means if you are not going to develop the point and you're not going to uh, change the details and then convert into main idea, main point, therefore, every individual student's answer is going to be the same. But how are we supposed to give you marks for your reading ability, ability of you to read the text, extract implicit and explicit idea, and ability of you to you know, develop the points? How can we see that? Definitely, basically using the details from the text and then you develop the points. So whatever that you copy directly from the text, even though you paraphrase, but if you fail to develop and convert the details into main idea. Therefore, you are not going to get good marks for your reading. So remember that uh, in order for you to gain 15 marks for reading, remember that each bullet point takes about five marks. So that means five marks for each bullet point. So how can you get that five marks? You must produce at least four to six points. Class, remember, I'm telling you four to six points. That means I'm talking about a complete set of points. That means details taken from the text, then you convert into main point and then you develop the point. So times by five for each bullet point. So to understand this better, perhaps I can straight away uh, show you a sample response. But before that, remember, detail is the first thing that you have to do, which you take directly from text. So this detail can be paraphrased or you can even copy um, uh, you know, the ideas directly from the text. But this is where we see the ability of the candidate to provide inference. Therefore, you take the details and then convert into main point and then you develop the point. Now, if you want to understand this better, perhaps I can um, I can share with you a sample response. I'm not going to go through everything. Perhaps let me go through the first one. Now, you're going to tell the newcomers about your recent hazardous walk. Can you see the details that I have or the details that, ha that have been highlighted here in yellow are the ideas that you can take in order to develop the main idea. For example, why the hazardous work, why the work was very hazardous, because you travel alone, because, it, because you were alone, you didn't have anybody to accompany you or to help you during, in the, uh, during that uh, previous or in that difficult situation, right? And then you know that uh, it's 16 degree below zero, it was extremely cold and then, um, and then it was about 50 kilometers lonely trail to cover. So you also talk about how distance, I mean, the long distance, okay? And then dumping fingers, so the bitter swiftness with which the frost had bitten. So you can, you're telling that the cold could attack very quickly. And then um, there is also an idea that um, you basically fell into the cold water. So this, and this is why I can say that the hazardous was very, the work was very, very hazardous. And then you struggle to build a fire. So these are all the details that you have taken from taxi. Now, can you just take whatever that you have highlighted in taxi and then write your response? No, that is where most of the candidates uh, uh, ended up writing um, uh, inefficient or um, not so good response okay why because they just take the details and then straight away write the answer remember 
where is your point? Where is your development of the point? So this is where we see how can we develop it? Can you see this word P here, this letter P? P means this point. So alone is the detail and travel alone is one of the reasons why the work was very hazardous. And then 50 kilometers is definitely the detail. So it's 50 kilometers it shows that it's a long distance. So long distance is definitely the main idea is the, is, is the point. So from here, you can obviously develop the idea. Now let's say you're talking about numbing fingers, you're talking about the bitter sweetness. So obviously the main idea is that the coal could attack quickly. So if you look at the points are somehow an inferenced um, uh, ideas, not really taken directly from the text. But in order for you to infer the main ideas, obviously you're going to take the details directly from the text. So always remember, P, D, D, but which one is the first step? D is the first step. The detail is the first step. So you highlight, you take all the details and then you're going to convert the details into a main idea and then you're going to develop the idea. So if you look at the details that have, that have been highlighted in green, supposed to be, um, you know, the knowledge and skills, okay? The one that in blue is supposed to be uh, the, the lesson learned, okay? So I can straight away show you this, okay? So when it comes to planning your extended response question, I would say that there are about two ways. Number one, maximize your reading insert. That means you have your reading insert. The moment you have highlighted or identified the details, I want you to immediately put boxes or, or any other um, design as long as you have details, point and development. That means you have three bullet points. I mean, for each bullet point, you must have five sets of point details and development. Therefore, for three bullet points, you must have 15 sets of point details and development. Or you can even take a, a, a piece of paper. You can use the blank pages given in the reading insert. And then you can start um, you know, making a table form and then uh, with details, uh, point and development. Basically, these two are the same thing. It's just that one, you're just doing it right on the reading insert beside uh, beside or around um, a little the little space given in the reading insert, you know, or you can just take a blank paper and then you can put everything in a proper uh, table form. Okay, so can you see that? See, like just now, traveling alone, it was very, very hazardous, right? So traveling alone is the main point, but from where you managed to understand it. So you've basically been warned and then uh, you thought that, you know, you're quite invincible. So you thought that you could survive in any extreme condition. So perhaps it was a very wrong move, okay? So can you see that? Um, and then, so based on that, we can say that, what would be the skill and knowledge that you need to have? You are not supposed to travel alone. Why? Because you have to go back to the detail because you need a partner to help with the fire. It's very risky. So you can obviously see how can you develop it, okay? Now, another um, hazardous, uh, I mean, another reason for the hazardous walk is definitely the long distance. How do you know long distance? So the detail, 50 kilometers. So do not put 50 kilometers as the main point. Put 50 kilometers as the detail. And then from there, you generate the uh, main idea. So um, we can see that all the points have been covered now. Okay. So remember five times of PDD. Okay. Remember in order to score highest level, uh, highest level for um, reading um, uh, reading mark. Make sure that you have done a thorough evaluation and analyze the text, okay? You have provided developed ideas and sustain well related to the text. That means it's not just providing details, but you provide details and then you infer the main idea from there you develop the point. So I a wide range of ideas is supplied. Remember five times of PDD. So therefore you must have 15 uh, PDDs, okay? So there is supporting details throughout, which is well integrated. That means you have selected accurate details, supporting details, not just merely uh, any details taken from the text. 
Now, all three bullet points are well covered, okay, in a consistent and convincing voice too. So, these are the criteria, marking criteria for reading. And for writing, we're going to look at whether your register is suitable. If it is a formal uh, writing, whether you, you have used formal um, vocab, whether if it, is, if it is an informal, perhaps we are looking at the register, the style, the tone. And the language of the response sounds convincing and consistently appropriate. Ideas are firmly expressed in wide range of effective, interesting language. And obviously, we're going to look at structure and finally, your language accuracy. Okay, and then this is definitely a simple answer. So as you see, the moment you have done written um, a complete set of PDD, therefore you just put a tick. Uh, that means you must have 15 sets of PDD. So the moment you have written with the first one, you cancel it. That means so you put a tick so that you don't get confused. So um, that's all. I have, um, I have top tips uh, to share, okay, on paper one here. Uh, extended response. So always start with FAPP. Remember this FAPP format, uh, audience, purpose, and from which perspective. Practice as much as you can so that you can find planning style that suits you. Don't forget that your plan is only notes. So you must use your own imagination to add words and phrases you think your character would say. And then PDD allows you to ensure you are including everything you need. So always check for, always proofread your answer before you submit, okay? Now you can obviously com combine uh, the three bullet points into different, different paragraph, but I will definitely suggest you to put it according to the bullet point. There is bullet, white, bullet point one, body paragraph one, bullet point two, body paragraph two, bullet point three, and body paragraph three. And you can have introduction and conclusion depending on the Question. So remember, the moment you fail to miss any one of the bullet points, you will straight away be given with level two mark for reading. So make sure that you address all three bullet points equally. Okay, so I think that's all. Um, so now I will be conducting uh, another um, IGCSC seminar uh, for paper two. Okay, so thank you very much. And then all the best for your examination.